Hi there, my name is Murray Shabant. I'm the CEO of Signa Group. And Signa Group really stands for and is passionate about a meaningful transformation. And we see the Black Empowerment legislation as a way of bringing about meaningful transformation in our country. Um, my passion in particular is around ownership transactions um, and bringing about uh, meaningful ownership uh, in businesses that operate in the South African environment. And, and I guess that's why I've been asked, like, what is meaningful ownership? Well, uh, Black Economic Empowerment, the, the codes and the legislation do attempt to address ownership at three levels. Uh, they talk about the three attributes being the voting rights uh, of shareholders, the economic interest of shareholders, which means their ability to participate in dividends or the, the profits of a company. Um, and then the third attribute is what they call net value which is the right of, of shareholders to participate in the growth, uh, the growth and the value of the company over time. But um, in, in my view, really, uh, meaningful ownership is, is really the ability of shareholders to ultimately create wealth for themselves over a period of time. And the question many ask is, has BEE really brought about any kind of meaningful wealth creation in the hands of black people? And I guess ownership is a really emotive subject. You know, if you think about land ownership, for, for instance, um, and the, the, the sort of political hot potato that is, um, and, and the emotive subject, you know, because people were dispossessed from their land and, uh, and now we're having, you know, legislation has been called on, upon to, re, you know, to redistribute land um, based on, that, on those historical ownership trends. And, the same has happened for, for companies, you know, if, you, um, if you're familiar with the laws of the country, you know, during the, the 1920s, 30s and 40s, a lot of the legislation dispossessed or removed the ability of black people to participate in the formal economy. And so black economic empowerment is really meant to address this issue of, of ownership in a meaningful way. And so when you, in the 1990s, when um, when um, um, we had our first uh, elections, um, you saw in the early 1990s, a lot of um, what we would call early stage or, or, or narrow based BE deals taking place. And there were a very few beneficiaries. Uh, in fact, there was, a, there was a stated policy of the ANC to say, um, we want to bring about this black bourgeoisie, you know, a, a rising and affluent black middle class was seen as quite an important political step for the ANC. Um, and, and so you saw a lot of deals being done with what were called, you know, politically influential people where corporates felt that if they were doing a, a, a BE deal with someone who was politically connected, it would help the company, you know, in, in doing business with government down the line. And, uh, and to an extent that was true. But at the end of, you know, 1999, when we had the Asian crisis, most of the BE deals that had been done at that stage uh, were underwater and collapsed. And you kind of were left with only sort of five true beneficiaries, what they call the famous five, who really you know, succeeded um, out of that narrow-based era. Um, but realizing that this narrow-based uh, BE didn't really bring about any kind of meaningful op uh, ownership for, for, for many South Africans, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa back in 2003 was tasked by the government of the day to bring about this idea of broad-based uh, black economic empowerment. And, and obviously what this meant was the introduction of various elements of BEE. So we had uh, management control, for instance, or skills development was another one, um, preferential procurement, uh, enterprise development, supply development, even socioeconomic development were all introduced to broaden the, the impact of, of BEE. But what was important was that the ownership elements stayed. And in fact, in the 2015 revision of the BE codes, uh, the ownership element was made a priority element. In other words, companies that, uh, that implement an ownership structure but don't do it at a minimum level will get penalized uh, on their scorecards. So, so the good thing about the broad-based approach of BE that was introduced uh, in the 2007 codes was that it introduced this idea of employee share ownership schemes, it introduced uh, broad-based or community ownership schemes. It even brought about equity equivalent programs for multinationals. And so you saw the, that ownership was opened up for many more participants to take part 
as opposed to what had happened up until now, which was this narrow based approach. And so you've seen like on the, on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, you would have, there's a lot of really um, meaningful transactions have taken place. Xara is a great example, Celsi, Vodacom though, and others, you know, saw the implementation of these broad based ownership structures, um, which resulted in huge rewards uh, paid out to beneficiaries, you know. Um, but still, even with all of that, uh, you know, depending on, how, on who you ask, the ownership of the JSE, direct black ownership of the JSE or large corporates is somewhere between three and nine percent. Um, and uh, if, you, if you take into account indirect ownership, so say through pension funds like the government pension fund or the PIC, it's somewhere around say 23 percent. So it's still a relatively low participation in the market capitalization of large companies on the JSE um, at 23%. At um, and so the question remains is, is has BE and black ownership brought about meaningful ownership for, uh, for South Africans? And, and I guess the answer sort of lies a little bit in, in how are we doing in bringing about black ownership in small and medium enterprises? Um, because you know, a lot of government policy and a lot of uh, people say that, you know, the the future of South Africa lies in, in the development of small and medium enterprises or entrepreneurs, you know, creating uh, wealth and creating jobs. But the, the truth of the matter is that the SMME space in South Africa is not very buoyant, you know. By international standards, South Africa's SMMEs uh, don't perform particularly well. And there, there are many reasons for that, but... Um, you know, if, 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 if you think that in South Africa we've got about two and a half million SMMEs and a lot of those are micro enterprise, what we would call informal uh, businesses, those are not real businesses, you know, uh, that are creating employment and driving economic growth. Yes, they provide uh, incomes for their, for their owners, um, you know, and effectively like a self-employment, but the SME segment in this country that has, you know, that is a segment that has really got any uh, job creation potential around uh, employing people and, and, and generating reasonable turnovers is really only about uh, 250,000 businesses. And that only accounts for about 28% of the jobs uh, in South Africa. Yet by international standards, SMMEs make up 60 to 70% of jobs. So, so the, the success rates of SMEs in this country are relatively low and, and, and therefore are SMMEs is seen as a way of, of bringing about you know meaningful participation uh, of in the ownership of the economy well i believe they will uh, where we have an environment of economic growth where small and medium enterprises can start and become successful um, but you know south africa has been experiencing over the last decade you know low uh, economic growth rates relative to to um, other emerging countries um, but I think for me, there is still an opportunity to create meaningful um, um, black participation in SMMEs using the BE legislation that's available uh, to us. Now, if, if you're a business owner and you want to operate uh, your small or medium enterprise in the South African environment, and particularly if you supply corporates or government, um, it's critical to have a competitive BE score to actually to, to trade. So for companies where they have a turnover of less than 50 million rand uh, per annum, um, having a 51% black ownership structure gives you an automatic level two status, which is a very competitive uh, uh, BE status. And so what you've seen in the, in the last couple of years uh, is, is a lot of business owners realize that they'd like to be a level two, 51% black owned, but they don't want to necessarily have a 51% controlling shareholder in their business. And so you've seen a, lot, a proliferation really of these very clever fronting structures um, where, you know, fronting in the past was kind of um, quite ridiculous in, in many instances. Now it's become very sophisticated with legal structures and, and special purpose vehicles and uh, call option agreements and, and, and the like, um, which are being used to basically um, what we call benefit diversion uh, in, in BE language is uh, that you have, you talk about having a black shareholder in the, in the business 51%, but that black shareholder never sees 51% of the benefits. Um, so things like these benefit diversion or, or window dressing as it were, 
um, have become quite uh, quite common uh, because you know it, it is a license to trade if you've got a very competitive BE level. But I do believe that there is a good option contained in the legislation where companies can get a competitive BE level and at the same time support meaningful uh, meaningful ownership and transformation. And that is uh, one of the provisions in the, the BE codes um, which provides for the facilitator status of, of black private equity funds. Um, and this is an area for me that's particularly interesting um, because it brings about the right, let's call it the right behavior and also the right outcomes. So basically how it works is the, the BE codes say that where a fund manager is a black owned and managed and operated business and it manages a private equity fund, that private equity fund, all the investments of that private equity fund are seen as uh, black owned investments. And what the private, what, what the legislation says, it says is as long as the fund manager is managing funds where at least 51% of the assets under management of that fund are in black owned businesses, then the other 49% of the assets under management can be invested in companies that are not black owned. And that's how a fund manager can Play its facilitator role status. So, the practical implication for for business owners is that uh, they get invited. They can be invited to participate in a private equity fund, and by participating in this fund and making a contribution of capital into the fund, they are effectively investing in black entrepreneurs. But at the same time, by participating, they, their businesses are. Uh, black empowered through the facilitator status of the of the private equity fund. And what's really good about the legislation in the BE codes is it says that uh, companies have a nine year period within which they can let's say benefit from the facilitator status of their of the black private equity fund. Um, and this gives them an opportunity to really sort out or find a solution to their to their black ownership credentials. So just to give you an example of a, of a case study which you know is is, is a success story and I know I know this, the, the details quite intimately because uh, the fund manager in question is, is a company called Invequity Fund Managers. It's a company in which uh, Sigma Group um, has as has an equity interest um, and the case study goes sort of along the lines of, a, of about three years ago an engineering business which was providing services to various municipalities, family owned business, been trading for 20 years, um, turnover roughly 30 million rand. They realized that if they wanted to continue growing their businesses, they, they had to meet the requirements of the triple PFA, uh, you know, where, where the municipalities were requiring them to have a, a competitive BE status. So the shareholders realized that they, the best way of doing that was to implement uh, a 51% black ownership structure, um, but they just didn't know how to do it. And so they approached Invequity um, to be the facilitator of their black ownership status. Um, to allow them to participate in that fund structure, they had to make a commitment of investing in a million rand a year into the fund, which was then deployed into BE investments on their behalf. And that afforded them their 51% black owned level two status. Now, what, what happened was immediately, they were much more attractive uh, and much more competitive from, their, from, the, from the BE status when they were uh, tendering for work at the various municipalities. And so what happened is the company grew. And in that growth, it attracted uh, the attention of a black entrepreneur. The black entrepreneur approached Invequity and said, listen, I really like this business. It's operating in the market segment I want to operate in. Can we do a transaction? The existing shareholders were more than happy to do a transaction because the value of their business had grown, you know, substantially over the three years in which they'd been participating uh, in, the, in the fund, in the facilitated uh, fund um, structure. So what happened then was that Invequity facilitated the transaction whereby the black entrepreneur acquired 51% of the equity um, in the, the trading business. Um, and that company now has gone on to grow significantly. And, and so you see, this is an example of a, of, a, of a story where meaningful ownership that benefited the existing business, benefited the new black entrepreneur who came into the uh, in, environment through a facilitated structure really did work. So really from, from that perspective, uh, meaningful ownership, I believe, is attainable. 
it means that business owners just need to open their minds, I guess, to alternative structures that can work for them. And um, private equity being one of those uh, types of structures that really can bring about meaningful, meaningful participation for people in the, in the ownership of our economy. So thank you very much for the opportunity to share um, just a different view on how meaningful ownership can be achieved. Um, and I really look forward to seeing you at the, at the Top Co event. Thank you.